Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out the range to talk about five rifles every red-blooded patriotic American should own. Now please don't read into this video. I'm not saying if you don't own one or more of these rifles, you're un-American. This is just a fun video to talk about American firearms that are really historic and kind of reinforce the fact that America has produced some of the best fighting rifles in the history of the world. But before we get started with today's video, please take a moment to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It really means a lot to us. That subscribe button is a big thumbs up for us, and also comment down below because that helps us with the algorithms. With that being said, let's get started with today's video. The rifles we're gonna show you this afternoon are in no particular order, and we're just gonna talk about them as we grab them out of their respective bags. The first rifle we grabbed is the 1903 Springfield. Now this is the A3 model, which means it has an adjustable rear sight and an aperture sight. So that's mounted on the rear of the receiver. The original 1903 would have had an open V-notch sight forward of the receiver about here. And that would have been the rifle most commonly used during World War I. By World War II, the rifle was being phased out, but still in use. And we would see the A3 variant being used at that point. This rifle, is a Mauser design, so it was licensed by the United States from the Mauser company uh, prior to World War I. But like many countries that uh, adopted the Mauser in the United States, we kind of made it our own, especially with this A3 modification. This rifle also features something you may not see on all Mausers, which is the magazine shutoff. So right now with this lever down, it's clearly marked off. And what that means is the gun will not feed from the magazine. It's intended for single loading. Flip it to the on position. Now the bolt will travel far enough back to pick up a round out of the magazine and it'll, it'll feed from the magazine. Uh, the troops in the field would fire single rounds, single loading until given the order to fire from the magazine, at which point they'd flip that switch and start using the Springfield. This one is chambered in 30-06. It has its original furniture on it. This is a Smith Corona built rifle. So even though it's called a 1903 A3 Springfield, a uh, number of companies uh, manufactured the rifles, not just Springfield. The gun does load from a stripper clip, which once again, I forgot to bring out stripper clips for it. And as I said, it's 30-06, and you can easily load five rounds into its internal magazine. Now, I currently have the magazine in the off position. I'll show you what that means. So there's four rounds in the magazine, my fifth one sitting there. Now, when I run the bolt, you'll notice it's not picking up a round out of the magazine. So as a troop, I could just throw a round in there and start shooting. I also, before we get started, want to mention that uh, American Eagle, which is manufactured by Federal, uh, we want to thank our friends over at Federal for supplying the ammunition to the channel. It really helps us out a lot. And uh, I've been shooting American Eagle and Federal ammunition since I was a kid. Absolutely love this stuff. So please check them out. So to single load, just throw a round in there. It doesn't really have to be in any particular position. Close the bolt and fire. Now, one thing that's interesting about the O3A3 is the rear sight is, is protected by these ears. You have a little knob to adjust for windage, but for elevation, you just have a detent and a, like a little ladder, if you will, for the rear aperture to slide up and down for the various ranges. Now, because it's still in the off position, it won't pick up around from the magazine. I'll flip it to the on position, which will allow the bolt to come back just a little bit further, and now it'll pick up around out of the magazine. Notice the bolt locks open when you're feeding from the magazine on the last shot fired. For being such a light, handy, narrow rifle, it is very surprisingly comfortable to shoot with the 30-06 ball ammunition. You'll notice it has a large metal butt plate, but that distributes the recoil forces broadly over your shoulder, making for a very, very pleasant full power cartridge rifle to shoot. Definitely an American icon. Two world wars, and it's something that every red-blooded American should own or aspire to own. And you can pick them up on the used market because they're not currently being manufactured, to my knowledge, anywhere. There's people that are refurbishing them, but if you go to places like gunbroker.com, you can pick them up, depending on the condition, for fairly reasonable prices still. Guys, please swing by and check out Big Daddy Unlimited BDU. They help support us here at the Military Arms Channel with products and things like that so we can continue to bring you content. There's a link in the video description down below that'll take you to the Mac blog and website. 
please follow that link. And from there, you'll find a link to Big Daddy Unlimited and try them out just for 99 cents. You can see what they're all about. In essence, they're just like a big online store that has amazing prices. So please, again, check out BDU. The next rifle that we grabbed out of the bag is the US M14 service rifle. This one is built by Bula Defense. We'll talk more about this rifle in a future video, but it comes to us by way of Atlantic Firearms. Uh, they've been working with us for many years. Blaine over Atlantic Firearms is a great guy and they stock and carry these Bula Defense M14s. These are 100% USA made, uh, brand new production M14 semi-automatic uh, service rifles. So it has a forged receiver and it's one of the few rifles that actually does. If you've picked up one of the James River Armory M14s, uh, they will be using Bula Defense receivers. If you take a look at other companies like Springfield and, and Fulton Armory, they use cast receivers. But I think a lot of that uh, argument going back and forth as to which is superior is kind of moot because a properly cast receiver isn't going to fail on you. But the purists out there really like the forged receivers. This is my first experience with the Bula series of rifles, and we've only fired a few magazines out of it to get it zeroed, but in the future we will do a, a video on it. But the M14 uh, is, is an interesting rifle because it's one of the shortest lived military service rifles in American history. As an infantry rifle, I believe it was the wrong rifle for the United States to adopt in, in the Cold War. I believe the United States should have went with our allies and adopted the FAL. But because it really was kind of a hybrid of the original M1 Garand that it was, uh, you know, a, a sibling of or is a sibling of design-wise. It just, I think, appealed to the American military brass and soldiers because the M1 Garand had carried us through World War II, through Korea, and by the time this was adopted, there's just this love affair with this basic operating action. And so I think that's why it was adopted and also why it was so short-lived because it really does use kind of outdated technology. But that's not to say that this is not an amazing rifle. As an infantry rifle, I would prefer an FAL. But as a range rifle, shooting rifle, survival rifle, anything like that, this is an outstanding choice. Very, very iconic in appearance, absolutely beautiful. This Bula Defense has a beautiful American walnut stock. Uh, it's, it's very well put together, and I've been impressed with it so far. But the M1A, which is a Springfield version of the M14s that are out there, uh, are just great, great rifles to shoot. It uses a rotating bolt, and then the op rod here is part of the gas system as well. So you have a gas piston that's a short stroke up here on the gas block towards the end of the barrel, and then the gas piston will tap on this operating rod, which will then pull the bolt to the rear, rotate it, unlock it, and then the recoil spring will uh, chamber a new round after it ejects the spent case. It maintains the M1 Garand style rear sights. We have a manual bolt hold open on the left-hand side of the receiver, so you can pull down on that, or push down on that, pull the bolt to the rear, and that will lock the bolt open. Reliable, military accurate, you can get match grade versions of it. Lightweight, easy to shoulder, and again, an absolute pleasure to shoot. They fire from a 20 round box magazine as opposed to the eight round uh, end block clip that the M1 Garand used. It's also interesting to note that this is a rock and lock, if you will, magazine. Uh, it has a locking point in the front and then a locking point in the rear. Later with the M16, the Americans or the American military would go to a single locking point, which is on the side of the magazine with the M16. But a lot of European countries maintain this rock and lock feature, the AK-47, AKM series of rifles, um, you know, all sorts of firearms would, would continue to use that, like the original Bren 805. So you put the magazine in kind of at an angle, push it up, rock it back until it locks. You'll see the round sitting in there. Pull the bolt to the rear, release it. It does have a stripper clip guide up here, and that can be drifted out and uh, another uh, device be, can be put in there, which would then allow you to mount scopes to the rifle uh, very rigidly. You can do it anyway with just this threaded hole on the side and this index mark. The mount would just screw to the side and allow you to use a scope, but if you want a really rigid mount, you'll want to replace the stripper clip guide with another one that has a threaded hole inside, and, it would, and then the scope would attach to two points for something like a national match rifle. All right, the safety is just like the M1 Garand. It's inside the trigger guard. And this is one of my favorite rifles to shoot, the M14. The 
Yeah. I love this rifle, guys. Again, iconic lines, very reminiscent of the M1 Garand that came before it. This iconic long birdcage flash hider and bayonet lug. You just can't get more American than this. And this one has the walnut top handguard versus the um, synthetic one that you'll find on other rifles that are available on the market. So it really, really gives it a classic look and feel. Maintains its original flip up butt plate for firing in the prone position. And then that flapper release on the magazine. Brand new magazines are available and um, they're relatively affordable, usually right around 15 bucks. So about the only thing that's expensive to shoot is the rifle itself. It's a couple thousand dollars and then the ammunition at today's prices. But what a beautiful, beautiful rifle. Very impressed with this one so far. One of the things I get asked all the time is, Mac, how can I get involved in the firearms industry? Well, one of the best ways to do that is to consider going to Modern Gun School. It's an accredited school and they offer all the modern classes that will get you up to speed and be able to empower you to go out and find a job in the gun industry. You can learn gunsmithing and things like that and you learn from home. So please check them out. I have a URL down in the video description below. This video simply would not be complete without the longest serving military rifle in American history, the AR-15 slash M16. This is the A2 version of the rifle. Uh, this would have been my service rifle. I'm madly in love with this particular design. I'm a big fan of iron sights. This rifle was the last of its kind in terms of American military service. Uh, after this, we would go to flat top uppers and the use of force multipliers like RCOs, ACOGs, red dot sights, things like that. So this is an age gone by in terms of military rifles because of its use of iron sights. But the sights on this rifle are impeccable. They made a number of different changes over the years to the rifle. Uh, you know, obviously from the mid 1960s all the way to 2021, this gun has served in some form or role in the US military. And I should say form because it's still the primary infantry rifle, but it's gone through a number of different evolutionary changes. The A2 being my personal favorite, again, because of the iron sights. I really like the round hand guards of the A2. I like the 20 inch barrel, the rifle length gas system. If you've never shot a full size AR-15 M16 like this with a rifle length gas system, you really should try it out sometime because if you're used to shooting carbine length or even mid length gas systems, this thing is such a pussycat. The recoil impulse is very, very mild because of that gas system. The, uh, the A2 is truly a rifleman's rifle. This rifle can easily engage targets with iron sights out to 500 yards and area targets up to 800 yards. Lightweight and simply, I think, the best infantry rifle currently used by any military in the world. The early guns fired from 20 round magazines, but they would evolve over time to 30 round magazines like this. This is a PMAG. Uh, found this one in the gun safe that's fully loaded with I don't know what ammunition, so we're just going to shoot it off uh, here this afternoon, make sure I didn't screw up the dope on my rear sight. The M16, you guys are fully aware of it if you're watching this video, if you watch this channel for any time at all or watched other gun channels or just hung out in the gun store or own one yourself. This is not an uncommon rifle. This is truly America's rifle. And this thing is in common widespread use. So I'm not gonna go into the details of its operating mechanism. Loading it up and shooting it. I just love this gun. This is one of the rifles that I'll take out and shoot on a Sunday afternoon just to clear my head because the iron sights and all that good stuff. Now I do want to say that this rifle most of the rifles you'll see featured on the channel, especially the A2s, because I have several of them. It's my favorite version. Uh, this one is actually manufactured by Fulton Armory. And just like everything that Fulton Armory produces, this is an exceptionally well-made rifle. This rifle, I shoot better than my Colts, my original pre-band Colts. This thing just is a amazingly accurate rifle. And so if you're looking for something out there that's a little bit out of the ordinary, consider a Fulton Armory AR-15 because I think you're going to be surprised. They're not very big uh, in terms of their, their notoriety on places like AR-15.com and the AR-15 community. You'll find other brands being talked about far more, far more often, but I have not seen an AR-15, especially in the A2 configuration, better built 
than my Folk Armory, and this is the one I like to shoot the most because, again, it has extremely good accuracy. The next rifle I want to show you guys is the M1 Carbine, another iconic American military service rifle. This rifle came to fame during World War II, and it was the AR-15 M16 before the AR-15 M16. This was a rifle that was designed to shoot an intermediate cartridge, maybe a little under inter intermediate, let's say high-powered pistol cartridge maybe. Um, it used a straight wall case that, like you see here, and it was designed to be a replacement, if you will, for the handgun to, to give those forces initially that uh, didn't need a full-size infantry rifle like the M1 Garand, something else to carry that was more effective with more range than the 1911 service pistol. But it wound up being used by infantry forces of all makes and kinds. Airborne had their own paratrooper version, the Army Airborne Forces, during World War II. They made another version of the M1 carbine that was called the M2 that had a select fire capability and would be fired on full auto. This gun would have been used by U.S. military all the way up through Vietnam and, and Korea and well past World War II is my point. But if you take a look at the 30 carbine, it's a little straight walled case, and compare it to some of the other military cartridges we've shown you here this afternoon. There's 30-06, <laughs> there's 308, 762 by 51, and then 556. So that'll give you an idea of where the M1 carbine stacks up in terms of power. It's a little tiny 30 caliber bullet. Some folks loved it, other folks hated it, but that's true of all U.S. military firearms. It would fire from a detachable magazine. 15 rounds and 30 round magazines are commonly available for the guns. The magazine inserts straight in, has a single locking point. To release it, you have a magazine release push button right here by my index finger. And again, even though it wasn't designed by Garand, it operates very much like a Garand in that it has the rotating bolt, op rod, and charging handle, all that stuff. You'll also notice that it has a sight that's very reminiscent of the 1903 A3 Springfield. It has the metal protective ears. You have a rear aperture that's held in place by a detent that can slide up and down the ladder for elevation. And then you have a little knob over here on the right-hand side for windage adjustment. This one's manufactured by Fulton Armory. It's a beautiful, faithful reproduction of the military service rifle. Again, beautiful um, American walnut stock. Bayonet lug, just a great, great rifle. Lots of fun to shoot, and if you're fans of the, the Walking Dead television show, this gun actually makes a pretty prominent appearance in that show. I thought that was pretty fun. The selector lever for safe and fire is right here, so forward is safe, and then when you sweep it back to your, bringing your finger to the trigger, that will take it off safe and put it in the fire mode. Let's make sure that I have a round chambered. I do. And let's do a little shooting with this guy. Really, really pleasant, fun gun to shoot. Okay, when you want to lock the bolt to the rear, you have a little button here on the charging handle. You can pull that to the rear, push that button down, let it go forward, it'll lock that bolt to the rear. Push the magazine release button, reload, and resume shooting. Again, a simply iconic rifle. It would be good for survival situations if you need to hunt with it in an emergency situation. The only thing that's down, the only downside to it is they're somewhat expensive for what they are, especially if you get original military rifles. Uh, but you can still find those on places like Gunbroker. You can go with a new one like this. But again, the cost of the rifle is, is substantial compared to other products on the market. But if you're looking for that iconic look, you simply can't beat this thing. The other thing is 30 carbine is not the most common ammunition available in the United States these days or even when there isn't a panic buy going on due to pandemics and so, uh, civil unrest and things like that. But yeah, definitely one of those rifles that would look good on any American's mantle over the fireplace. This just screams American. The next rifle doesn't really need an introduction. This is the M1 Garand. I call it the Garand because that's what the U.S. military called it. Yes, I understand the designer's name is Garand. But the M1 Garand is probably one of the most iconic American military service rifles, despite the fact it really came to prominence during World War II. We saw it use in Korea, but by the time Vietnam had started, this rifle was phased out in favor of other rifles like the M14 and M16. So it didn't serve all that long in U.S. military, but the time that it did serve, it really defined a generation and cemented itself in American history because of 
uh, the fact that it is the rifle that took us through World War II to victory with our allies. The gun was adopted in the uh, late 1930s, and at that time, it was easily the most advanced infantry rifle fielded by any First World military. And it would take Germany and other countries uh, quite some time to catch up to this rifle during the war. So we went into the war with probably the best fighting rifle uh, available at that time. And GIs loved it. It was known for its accuracy, reliability, how easy it is to shoot. The only downside is, is if this rifle is kind of big and heavy. Uh, being six foot five myself, this rifle uh, doesn't look or feel all that big in my hands. But, uh, you know, if you're five foot six to five foot ten, this thing is a beast of a rifle, but still easily used by the American GIs and Marines. It's absolutely elegant in its design. Uh, you just can't beat the lines of it. Uh, uh, as I said with the M14 at the beginning of the video, this rifle obviously heavily influenced that rifle, the M14 being basically a product improved version of this. This rifle shoots the full power 30-06 cartridge versus the 762 by 51 of the M14. But yeah, just an amazing rifle and unique in so many different ways. One of those things that makes it unique is the fact that it's auto-loading but also uses a clip. Yes, this is a clip. This is an end block clip and it holds eight rounds. And loading this is fairly easy to do once you get the hang of it. Some folks will tell you you have to load it a certain way with the, the round stacking on one side or the other, which is absolute nonsense. It's not required that you pay attention to which side it's being stacked on. Just make sure that you get eight rounds in there. These end block clips were easily stored in bandoliers and the rifle was easily and quickly reloaded versus using just a standard stripper clip and bolt action rifles of the era. When the gun is empty, it locks open. This does not have a spring in it to feed the rounds up as a magazine would. It's a clip because it simply holds the rounds in place. The spring is built into the rifle itself. To charge it, you just place the end block clip in, push down until it locks into place, and then just tap that forward, the charging handle forward, and the weapon will load. The safety is right here in front of the trigger guard. And again, a very pleasant rifle to shoot. Outstanding sights, the aperture sight that you see here, which again was carried over to the M14, provides for an amazing sight picture. Very, very cool rifle. I love the M1 Garand. And also watch when this thing gets em goes empty, you already know this, but watch for that in-block clip to come shooting out of the top of the action. Ching. <laughs> yeah, what a beautiful piece of American military history. This rifle probably is the most iconic of all the rifles we've shown you this afternoon. Probably the most universally known, popular in some video games. <laughs> Man, what an amazing rifle. Definitely, if you're a red-blooded American, you're going to want to own one of these for sure. Throughout American history, we've been known as riflemen. That's because we've had a very strong American tradition from the very founding of our nation of individualism and the rifle being part of that individualism that put us in the country that we live in today in terms of living in a free country where individual rights are respected and revered and part of those rights are enshrined, obviously, in our Bill of Rights, including the Second Amendment. To carry on the tradition of Americans being riflemen, it's important because although we don't want to get into wars, the sad fact of the matter is, is we will ultimately find ourselves in wars. And that means Americans must have the necessary skills just inherent, which is part of our culture, instilled in them so that they can defend their nation against enemies. So this rifle is my personal favorite simply because I've shot it the longest. My very first centerfire rifle was an AR-15. We have a video on that of my first rifle. I still have it. 
And the A2 is just probably the last, as I said, of a breed in terms of weapons that were designed to be used with iron sights versus force multipliers, which are common in today's world's militaries. So for me, going out on a Sunday afternoon again, shooting something like this is mind clearing. It's a lot of fun. And should you need it, it can be used for survival, things like that to put food on the table. Outstanding firearms that I've shown you this afternoon. Again, all of them steeped in American tradition and history. Guys, if you enjoy videos like this, please become a Patreon supporter. We're supported by you, our viewing audience, not by the gun manufacturers or importers. There's a link in the description below. You'll get early access to videos, direct access to us. I answer all private communications. And also right here on YouTube, you have the option of joining our YouTube channel and supporting us right here again on YouTube. There's a little join button underneath the video player you're looking at right now. Click that join button and consider supporting us right here. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 13 years of support. America on. And now to finish out my last 10 rounds of the day. We'll talk to you guys soon. Love that Fulton A2. Thanks for watching, guys.